All right, let's talk about basal cell carcinoma. And we have this car flying through the sky to help us remember carcinoma. And basal cell, well, we'll talk about how we're gonna remember basal cell soon. We're actually gonna begin in this video talking about the risk factors in basal cell carcinoma. So here we have the sun with the light rays to help us remember that prolonged exposure to sunlight is a risk factor for developing basal cell carcinoma. And that's because it introduces a UVB-induced DNA damage. You might have noticed the albino guy over here to help us remember that albinism is also a risk factor. They have an impaired melanin production, and thus they're more susceptible to DNA damage. And we have this pig here with a zero sign in it. That was, remember, zero pig for zero dermer pigmentosa, in which the body cannot detect the pyrimidine dimers, and this leads to damage. Okay, these are the risk factors. And by the way, these are also the risk factors for squamous cell carcinoma. Although, squamous cell carcinoma also has additional risk factors, including immunosuppressive therapy, arsenic exposure, and chronic inflammation. We're not discussing that here. So let's talk about the features of basal cell carcinoma. So just imagine for a moment a top lip with a B on it. You know, if you turn a B on its side, it sort of looks like the top lip. And imagine an S on the bottom one. Or if you want, you can remember BS. B, basal cell carcinoma, is associated with the upper lip, whereas S for squamous cell carcinoma is associated with the lower lip. Although basal cell carcinoma and squamous cell carcinoma can occur in different parts of the body, the classic location is on the upper lip and lower lip respectively. But we're talking about basal cell carcinoma in this video, and that's why we're focusing on the top lip. The classical location of basal cell carcinoma is on the upper lip. So we have this one over here, the one, sort of like a trophy one, to help us remember that it is number one. It is the most common cutaneous malignancy basal cell carcinoma. We also have this pink pearl over here, to help us remember the gross morphology of great basal cell carcinoma is a pink pearl-like papule. More specifically, it's an elevated nodule with a central ulcerated crater surrounded by dilated vessels. These are known as telangiectasias, and if you look closely, you'll see these vessels surrounding the center over here. Next, we take a look at this histo histologic picture of the peripheral palisading. Histology of basal cell carcinoma shows nodules of basal cells with peripheral palisading. You see the basal cells over here with the palisading. And to help us remember this, we have a sign of the Palisades Parkway over here right under it. The Palisades Parkway for, per for peripheral palisading. Okay, now let's talk about treatment. So here we have this random knife over here. Knives in our video often represent surgery or surgical excision. Treatment for basal cell carcinoma is simply surgical excision. The good news is metastasis is very rare, and the rate of death in basal cell carcinoma is extremely low. All right, thank you so much for watching this scene on basal cell carcinoma. I hope you enjoyed. All righty, take care.